Howdy folks, it's Tom here from the Gaming Channel, and welcome to Channel Chat Vlog number 7. In this vlog, we're going to do something a little different. Normally, we sit and we talk about something, but today we're actually going to do something. We're going to build something, which is going to be an experience. Um, <laughs> we live in a particularly small house. Uh, we have no attic, we have no basement, we have less than a thousand square feet of living space. So horizontal surfaces are kind of at a premium. Um, however, we also like to play a lot of board games, and Gabe and I are starting to get into a particular war game that you guys will probably be hearing more about later. So today, we are going to build a board gaming tabletop out of a few common materials, one or two power tools if you have them, and I'm going to walk you guys through the process of how I'm going to do it. And as I said, we play a lot of board games. So some of our board games, and I'm not going to name any names, have a particularly large footprint. So in order to deal with these large footprint board games, we're going to build a, literally, it's just a board that goes on top of a table, However, it is a little bit more complicated than that. This is not going to be a two-minute video where I slap a piece of board onto a table and call it done. No. Um, so if you guys want to see me bumble my way through building something with absolutely no construction experience, stay tuned. If not, I'll throw a video like right here that the rest of you guys can go and watch. So we're going to run down the materials we need and get started. Okay. Okay. So to do this project, we are going to need a sheet of MDF, or medium density fiberboard. This is half an inch thick. It is the, unfortunately, the only thickness that I could find. Um, I've said it before, and I will probably say it many, many more times. We live in a fairly remote area, and sometimes it's kind of like living in the 1950s. We can't find some of the stuff that you would expect to find at most hardware stores. This is the thinnest piece of MDF that I could find. It's half inch. Unfortunately, it's kind of heavy. Um, if I could find it, I would go with quarter inch MDF as it will be almost just as strong. This thing is not going to bend anytime soon. However, it's very heavy and you're very unlikely to use this thing if it you can't move it. So... I would suggest going with quarter inch MDF, but I went with half inch because it's what I had. These come in four foot by eight foot sheets. Most hardware stores will cut it at least once for you. So I had the guys at my hardware store chop off a 42 inch section of it from the four foot by eight foot piece. So that gives us 42 inches wide wide by 48 or four feet long and that should be more than enough room to cover our board games even our largest footprint board game the important part for this is that we are going to be using this material this is two inch by one inch um, runner board i believe is what the gentleman at the hardware store called it the thing you have to remember with this kind of stuff though, when it's it's this stuff and it's things like two by fours, any dimension, what they call dimensional lumber, is that while they say it's two inches wide by one inch thick, it's actually not. Uh, when they cut it, they use a particular beefy type of saw that has a quarter of an inch blade on it, which removes a quarter of the a quarter of an inch from that number. So while this is called a one by two, it's actually a one and three quarter by three quarter piece. Now for you going and buying this stuff, that's not important. However, it is important because we're going to be attaching this to the board like so. And we're going to be doing that using plain old wood screws. However, if this is a quarter of an inch and you're thinking this is a full inch, you have an inch and a quarter, no, sorry, an inch and a half to work with, but you don't. You have an inch and a quarter 
which I didn't know at first because I bought inch and a quarter screws and had to go back and buy inch long screws. So learn from my mistakes. So obviously the next thing we'll need is the wood screws. So we have those as well. Um, you will need a tape measure because you got to measure somehow. Uh, you will also need obviously something to mark this with. You can use a pencil, a marker, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Oh, sorry. These actually come in eight foot lengths. Uh, or technically you can buy them. My guys offered to cut them up to whatever length I wanted. I just went ahead and bought two because I can cut them myself. If you want and they offer, you can have them cut it to the exact length you want. It will require a little bit more math because you're going to need to pick which sides you're going to have shorter and subtract four inches from it. So you could have them do two 42 inch pieces and two 44 inch pieces. And that should give you a full border around. This of course is going to be for catching dice. Because if you have small children, especially, or just very energetic players, um, oftentimes dice will go flying across the room, and this is to prevent that. So, uh, the next thing we will need is a drill. Very handy, very useful, especially for inserting these. The next thing we will need which is completely optional, is black spray paint. I'm going to paint this entire surface, including the uh, borders, black for, honestly, just for aesthetic purposes. If you like the color of the wood and, you know, whatever, go, ahead, go right ahead. Leave it the way it is. This is an extra step that you maybe don't have to do, but I'm going to. Um, so going back to the drill... Because of the way the grain runs on these boards, it runs this way, drilling the wood screws through the MDF shouldn't be too big of a problem. However, when we go to drill, and drill it into these, if the screw is close to the end, there's a possibility that the board will crack, split open. You don't want that because not only does it damage the wood and look like crap, um, it weakens it. So over time it will move and that crack will spread down the length of the wood through all of the screws and eventually this piece will come off. So I am going to pre-drill holes for the screws. I'm going to do that from the underside so that they won't be seen. You can just drill them straight up, drill a, drill a hole, run in a screw and be done with it. I, however, want this bottom edge to be as smooth and level as we can because, again, small children. Um, so I'm actually going to countersink those holes to fit the head of the screws. Again, you don't have to do that. That's a completely optional choice. And it really depends on who you're playing with and whether this is going to be around small children, how much safety precautions you take. Obviously with this, it will be, you will need a drill bit. I left that out. Uh, you can use whatever size drill bit you like, as long as it's not wider than the threads of your screws. And I think that's it.
and here you have it guys, the finished tabletop. We've got a bore on all four sides. So rolling is nice and we don't have to worry about if I can roll worth anything. Okay, you know what? <laughs> anyway, here it is, the finished product. We have the rails so that the dice usually won't go flying unless I'm rolling because, you know, uh, it's all spray painted. Well, I should say that the borders are spray painted. I had to cheat in the middle here just a little, just a little bit. It turns out I had used my can of spray paint before and it wasn't all there. So I wound up running out. However, um, it wasn't like half empty or something. So if you're going to do this total spray paint, I would suggest at least two, possibly three cans. Um, that one somewhat almost full can did all of the border and the center part was uh, unfinished. So I just used black acrylic uh, craft paint. That's the word I was looking for. Black acrylic craft paint. Um, unfortunately, that does uh, leave us with a little bit of a problem as this can't be washed. Water will dissolve the paint, but I'm not intending to leave it this way um, because... As you guys may have seen in the video, when I drilled the holes in the countersink for the screws, I did do that with a power drill. However, when I actually put the screws in, I did that by hand with just a regular screwdriver to show you guys that it can be done that way. So if you don't have a power drill, maybe you can borrow one from someone or maybe make a deal where, you know, you build two, one for you, one for them, if they let you use the drill to, to drill all the holes. Um, and because these rails are held on with just nothing but wood screws, they can be easily taken off and replaced if necessary, um, or taken off and modify the tabletop, which is my next plan for this project at some date in the near future. Um, I actually have plans to remove these rails, lay down a layer of sheet metal so that we have a magnetic surface, which would be really cool and then lay down a layer of felt. That way we could use neodymium magnets to still hold stuff to the board through the felt. I'll probably do that in a future video to show you guys the upgrade and how I do that. But yeah, um, all in all, it was actually a very quick project. Even with filming, it only took me not even an hour, I think. Building took me maybe half an hour and then spray painting and acrylic painting over the course of about another half an hour. So it's a really quick project, really simple, really easy to do. Um, other than the power drill to drill the holes in the countersinks, like I said, you don't even have to do the countersinks if you don't want to. I did. Um, but yeah, other than the power drill to drill the holes, you can really do this with hand tools if you wanted. Um, but yeah, so we're really happy, really enjoying it. Um, I set up a couple of games on it to show you guys what you can do with it, just to kind of test it out. And Laura Lee and the boys were all very happy with it. Lots of space, very easy to just pick up off the table. It's not real, real heavy. Um, as I said, if you use quarter inch MDF, it'll be a little bit lighter. But um, for, you know, two adults and two children playing on it, I think... I think this will work out really well. So I'm going to throw up some pictures uh, here for you guys to see uh, at the end here of the setups that I did and everything. So I'm going to let you guys go and probably play some board games on this thing. We'll see y'all later.
Thank you.